We are FRC Team 3487 Red Pride Robotics from Plainfield, Indiana. FRC competitions can be hectic, so we wanted to explain what to expect at a competition. Before going to a competition, you'll need to have a drive team and a pit crew sorted out. Drive team is just as it sounds. They're the people who manage and control the robot during matches. The drive team consists of a driver, an operator, a technician, a human player, and a drive coach. Pit crew can be anyone. People to repair the robot, people to talk to other teams, etc. To start, there's the basics. FRC competitions usually last about three days, Friday through Sunday. The first day is for load-in, and the rest are for matches in the true competition. In essence, load-in is for setting up the pit area and transporting the robot to make early Saturdays easier. The pits are the team's home bases. That's where repairs happen and where the robot resides when it's not in a match. On our typical load-in, our team brings the robot, our equipment, and the drive team in the pit crew. Load-in is also when the robot gets inspected to make sure that it fits into the FRC parameters. Sometimes, practice matches are also played on load-in nights. On the second day, the entire team comes to the event. When we get to the competition, pit crew and drive team head to the pits and everyone else goes to the stands where they'll watch and scout matches. In the pits, drive team and pit crew talk to other teams and prepare the robot for matches. But before the true matches can start, there's usually a few practice matches as well as the opening ceremony. After the ceremony, the first match begins. Depending on how much space there is, teams can start queuing for matches as early as two to three matches ahead. To queue, bring the robot, drive team, and drive station to the allotted area and wait. During this time, you can talk to your alliance mates about game strategy. When it's your time for your match, walk the robot onto the field, set up with your alliance, and get ready for the match to start. While the drive team is physically operating the robot, the rest of the team can be scouting from the stands. For more information on scouting, check out our other video. It, but in essence, scouting is recording data on every team in a competition to form the best possible alliance in the playoffs. Matches will take the entire second day and usually have the third. A helpful resource for match data is the Blue Alliance. The Blue Alliance is a website and a mobile app that lists match data and shows overall event ranking. After matches have ceased, it's time for alliance picks for playoffs. Every team sends a representative down to the field. Personally, our team's representative is the head scout, and we send them down with the data we've collected through scouting and our pick list. The representative can be anyone from the team. Once every team has sent a representative down to the field, they'll be arranged in a ranking order. The top eight teams are alliance captains. The number one team can pick any team that they want, number two can pick anyone under themselves, and so on. When a team is picked to be on an alliance, they can choose whether to accept or deny that offer. If they accept, then they are now part of the alliance of whoever chose them, and pick moves on to the next highest captain. If the team denies, then they cannot say yes to any other team that picks them. The easiest way to explain this is through an example. Say that the number one team picks the number three team. If the number three team accepts, then they join the first seed alliance, and everyone moves up one spot to compensate. So the previous number nine team becomes the number eighth, and they become an alliance captain. If number three denies, then they will still be able to create their own alliance, but they won't be able to accept an offer from number two. The pick order goes one through eight, then eight through one. Once every alliance has three teams, picks are complete. Alliance teams meet and discuss strategy for their match. The first seed alliance, so the number one ranking team alliance, plays the eighth seed alliance. Second plays the seventh, third plays the sixth, and fourth plays the fifth. It's important to note that not every team will be picked for playoffs. These teams can still stay at the competition as substitute robots if a robot is broken and cannot be fixed. In that case, the next highest ranked team, not already in an alliance, will sub in. Even if there is no shot of your team playing in playoffs, stick around for the awards ceremony to see if you won anything and to support the other teams at the competition. Typically, playoff matches are played twice. If there's a tie, a third match will be added. Playoffs start with quarterfinals. The first and eighth seed alliances play, then the second and seventh, and so on. Once the final two have played their first match, it goes back to the start with the eighth and the first seeds playing again. Once the final two teams have played their first match, it goes back to the start with the eighth and the first seeds. The winners of these quarterfinals go on to the semifinals. The winners of the matches between alliances one and eight goes on to play the winner of the match between alliances two and seven, and so on. Once all of the semifinals are complete, the remaining two alliances move on to the finals, and once their two matches are complete, the winning alliance is announced. After playoffs comes awards. Prior to the competition, teams will have a meeting with the judges to talk about their season and their robot. This can qualify them for awards. For example, in the 2022 game Rapid React, our robot was incredibly sturdy to the point that it was rammed into and dropped from 8 feet in the air multiple times, without breaking. We looked at the awards list, saw an award for intentional design robustness, and made a point to mention it during our meeting with the judges. We ended up winning that award. Apart from awards that can be won from the judges' meeting, there are also awards for the top ranking teams as well as some spirit awards. Awards and the closing ceremonies are usually grouped together at the end of a competition. Once the closing ceremony ends, it's time to go home. The pits are packed up, the stands are cleaned, and everything, including the team, is loaded up onto whatever brought it there. And that's what to expect from an FRC competition.